Welcome to our video about ABA one c and how it affects sex. The normal level of glycated hemoglobin A1C in people without diabetes is 36 millimoles per mole. The healthcare team can better manage the levels if the patient understands what the number means. A number of people like to write the results down in their diary. It can also be helpful to identify the causes of their high levels, including stress or depression. Some people write the results down in a diary and then track them later. Normal glycated hemoglobin A1c for non-diabetics is 36 millimoles per mole. The normal glycated hemoglobin A level for non-diabetics is less than 36 millimoles per mole. Higher levels of glycated hemoglobin are a sign of poorer control of blood glucose, and have been associated with cardiovascular disease, nephropathy, retinopathy, and neuropathy. For these reasons, the glycated hemoglobin A1c level is considered to be a reliable indicator of diabetic status. Nevertheless, the 1c levels should be closely monitored. People with a level greater than 36 millimoles per mole may have anemia. Certain medications, such as beta blockers, can affect the blood sugar level, as can a high level of cholesterol. Also, some hemoglobinopathies can affect hemoglobin A1c levels. The normal glycated hemoglobin A1, or H1C, is a blood test that measures the average amount of glucose in the blood over the past three months. It is typically used to diagnose diabetes or prediabetes, but it is also useful in preventing the onset of chronic disease. Non-diabetics should keep up A1C levels below 36 millimoles per mole, while high levels are indicative of diabetes. The test is very important for people with diabetes, the average blood glucose level for non-diabetics is about 10.5 millimoles per mole, which is higher than the normal NICE target of 36 millimoles per mole. However, high levels are a sign of poor diabetes control and a high risk of complications. A normal H1C is a result of glucose being attached to the minor portion of the hemoglobin. The amount of glucose attached to the hemoglobin is directly proportional to the blood sugar level. HBA1C reflects average blood sugar levels and a high level of blood sugar will increase the amount of glycated hemoglobin. HBA1C is measured in percentages or mole per mole. A normal HBA1C level for non-diabetics is less than 5.6% of hemoglobin. And HBA1C level of between 6.4% and 7.5% is indicative of prediabetes or prediabetes. A patient's healthcare professional will discuss with him or her a personal target range based on their current HbA1c level and the date of the next test. Studies have also linked a higher HbA1c level with an increased risk of colorectal and pancreatic cancers. However, the data on the association between HbA1c and cancer risk are limited. Only one study, a linkage study in New Zealand, found a 40% increased risk of all cancers among people with HbA1c levels of 6.0 to 6.9%. Interestingly, these results were consistent when adjusted for ethnicity, age, and dietary factors. Effects of sex on HbA1c In a recent study, researchers found that men had higher levels of HbA1c than women. This difference was largely due to the difference in hematological and cardiovascular risk factors between the sexes. While smoking and alcohol consumption were negatively associated with HbA1c, men and women had similar levels of Hb. This study, however, is the first to show that sex has an impact on HbA1c. The authors of the study assessed glycemic control in T2D patients. The results showed that women had higher HbA1c levels than men, even after adjusting for sociodemographic variables and self-management behaviors. In addition, Men with more severe diabetes were more likely to have inadequate glycemic control than women. The authors concluded that glycemic control might be related to how well a person feels supported socially. Another study found that penile prosthesis users with type 2 diabetes may benefit from sexual activity and regular sexual activities. They studied 67 male subjects with a 1C levels greater than 6.5% before and after implantation. The researchers evaluated the contribution of sexual activity to the patients of a 1C level and other DM factors, including age, duration, and frequency of sexual activity. After a year, their 1C levels improved by 0.2%. In two population-based studies, the 1C levels were higher in lean, overweight, and obese individuals. 
This association remained unchanged when the study excluded obesity, certain medications, and disease from the comparison. The researchers also analyzed differences in the levels of HbA1c between men and women. In general, women had lower HbA1c levels than men. This finding is consistent with previous findings in the literature and supports the role of gender in the development of HbA1c levels. The researchers also observed that the effects of sex on HbA1c have similar effects in men and women. Men with higher levels of HbA1c were also more likely to be overweight and have higher systolic BP. The study also showed that white women are less likely to develop diabetes compared to men. In addition, sex and HbA1c levels were lower in younger women and black men. Moreover, low energy levels may make people less energetic, making it less appealing for them to engage in sexual activities. Hence, it's important to carry some quick fix supplies and snacks during sex. If the two of you feel tired during sex, you can pause the activity and test your blood sugar levels. Then, you can eat a snack before continuing your session. Although HbA1c levels can vary across genders, men and women in a study conducted by Chang CJ, Lu FH, Wu JS, and Navarro JM found that men with diabetes and women with normal blood glucose were not at greater risk for developing the condition. In addition, age, BMI, smoking, and alcohol consumption had no effect on HbA1c levels. Thank you for watching. Please like, comment, and subscribe if this was helpful.